Hey guys, Jacob here and welcome to the third video of this tutorial, Python from Zero to Pro. First of all, I want to say this thing behind me is something which I'm working on right now and soon I will release the new video about that, so don't worry guys. But in this video, uh, I'll talk about the lists, we are, which are one of the built-in Python data structures. We'll talk about uh, if statement, so we'll be able to do a certain condition with your code and also about, we'll talk about loops, which will help you to iterate through data structures such as lists for example. Uh, I hope you made the homework from last video uh, because I will cover the solution uh, just in a minute. This video is going to be a little bit harder but to finally we'll be able to do more complex stuff with our code and also be able to do simple automations with our tasks. So let's jump into the code. So, hey, 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 now we are in a code. And so first of all, let's cover the homework solution from the last video. Um, it's kind of easy. You remember you had to create the string and store the number within the string or inside the string. So let's, let's do it right now very quickly. Let's create the variable with some text. I am all right and store the number with it uh, we can assign them let's say 15 inside it so this is the first solution that's the first solution uh, we'll now concatenate this string into the one full string as you can remember from the previous video we are able to add strings mm, together mm. but in order to do that we have to convert the integer into the string and let's print it out so as you can see it works so that was the first uh, solution now let's jump to the, the second solution uh, this one we can just do with one line of code uh, it's called the f string you can read in documentation about that it's kind of new new thing from python 3.7 probably or 3.6 i'm not sure uh, but the, the thing is you can store the variables with the curly brackets uh, like this and we'll be using it uh, many many times so as you can see the second thing is also working um, yeah all right guys so now uh, let's talk about this video and first of all we'll talk about the lists uh, so what is a list in Python? So uh, this is uh, some collection of items in a particular order. Uh, you can store uh, Python objects and remember that everything in a Python uh, is actually an object. So you can store strings, numbers, you can store different lists within a one list. You can store actually everything there. And the types don't have to be the same within the lists. And you can actually modify the list as well but yeah first of all let's let's see how the list looks like in a Python so that's the syntax of the list as you can see we can print out my list yeah we stored the one two three inside the list now as I told you we can mix types within the list Let's reassign the list with different variables. Let's see, Adam, one, two, and let's do Alex. And let's print it out. Yeah, as you can see, those are different types, strings and integers. And now I wanna show you how to get some, some element uh, from the list. So what you need to know about the list is that they starts with the index zero, not with the one. Uh, so in order to get the Adam from the list, we have to do, we have to use this syntax. So it will give you, give us the first element uh, from the, from the list. And in order to get the second element, we have to simply type here one. All right. Um, and now I will show you how to get the last element from the list. So in Python, the last element from the list is actually minus one. Pretty, pretty simple. And actually you can do op 
like every operation with those elements. So let's say if this is the last element is the string as as you remember from the previous video, we were covering different methods on a strings. One of them is upper. It will give us the result Alex with the capital uh, capital uh, letters. And we can also check the uh, length of our list with the len method. And as you can see, it should be four, obviously. And yeah, it is it is four. So the last element is also um, we can copy this. To get the last element, we element we can also use uh, three because yeah, index starts from zero, obviously. Okay, now uh, I would like to talk a little bit about modifying a list. So most of the times uh, you want to do something with your list. You don't just have it stored in your memory and you can actually do everything you can imagine with your list. So you can add elements, you can remove elements, change them. And let me give you a quick example. Let's say that you're creating this epic uh, strategy game and you have your un units. And if your units die and all of the units are stored stored in your list, you have to delete them. If they lose some HP, then you have to modify the elements. And if you recruit the, the new army, the new units, then you have to simply uh, add uh, the units to your, to your uh, list. And now we will be doing this. We will be doing a couple of operations uh, within the list. So let's create the list cars and store some cars. I know you guys... Uh, like cars as me, so we'll do the German cars. Let's print it out very quickly. And now let's add the new car to our list and the method to do. And in order to do that, you, we need to use the method called append. So we can actually append the opal to the list, print it out again, and as you can see now, our list contains four different elements. We can also remove elements from the car. Uh, from from the list. So let's remove uh, Audi and let's print our list again. Oh, sorry, I forgot about the column of the brackets. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So now, as you can see, we have again uh, three elements in, in our list without uh, Audi. There's uh, also a couple of different methods which I really want to cover in this uh, video. Uh, in order to remove the elements from the list, we can also use the method called pop and we can say which which index do we want to delete from our list. So let's say that we want to delete the opal from our list. Uh, as we know, this list has three elements. So the last element is it's on the tw uh, second index. So let's do that and let's print our list again. As you can see now, we have only two elements in our list, Mercedes and BMW. All right, uh, the next thing which I want to show you is sorting, sorting elements in your list. So let's say that you have the, you have some array, uh, some list with those, with those numbers, and we want to sort it out. It's pretty simple in Python, you just uh, create, uh, you just have to type uh, dot sort function and it will sort the list for you. Let's print it out again. Yeah, as you can see, the list is sorted. And we can also uh, we can also sort the list but in a different order. And in order to do that, we just need to pass the additional argument. It's called reverse dot true. And now you can see uh, the first element is 111. All right, mm, we can also just reverse the list. Let's assign, let's reassign the list again. And in order to do that, we just type numbers.reverse. And again, as I told you last time, every method you can check out uh, in documentation. And let's print out, as you can see, our list is reversed. All right, guys, now let's dive a little bit deeper and we will work with the list a little bit, little bit more. So please guys meet the for loop. Uh, you'll be often in a situation when you want to do some, something with all of the elements of your list or just a few elements. So yeah, as I said, it might be a whole list, but sometimes it might be just some elements with a certain condition. So here 
uh, you will gonna use for loops and if statements. So let's do it right now. So first of all, uh, let's reuse our list cars. Let's create again. And let's say we want to uh, iterate through all of the elements in our list. We can simply do, like the syntax is this, we have to assign the new variable car, which will iterate through every car in our list. So now we can print car, and as you can see, we iterated through every, every car. Mm, so let's do it a little bit different. Let's print it out and say, we'll use the F string here, I love, I love car dot. So as you can see, we kind of did, like we kind of used every element in our list and we did something with that. Now let's cover a different example. Uh, we, will, we will use the, li the list with the numbers. And in order to do that, we can use the range function in a Python. You, as I said, you can check it out in the documentation. It will simply create the list with the 12 elements starting from uh, zero. Let's print it out. As you can see, it's here. I think we can comment this out. Perfect. Um, oh, sorry, this one as well. Yeah. All right, guys. Now let's let's have an example when we want to actually modify each element of our list and create a new list with this uh, from the previous one. So let's have the list called numbers with just simple three numbers, and let's have the new list. It will be the empty list. Now we'll iterate through the list for number numbers, and we'll kind of do something with our new uh, new list. So we want to uh, double the amount of each element from the previous list and append it to the new list. How to do that? It's pretty simple. All we have to do is the new list append, which you already know, number doubled. And we can print out our new list. As you can see, our list is doubled. All right, guys, so now let's cover the if statements. So what's if statements? As you can actually uh, think, it's some kind of condition. And how it is in Python, it's pretty simple. Uh, let's say we want to print out all the even elements from the list. So let's create a... Uh, for for loop with the range of 12 elements and we want to print only even elements so let's use the modulo here modulo will give us so it will divide the number uh, by two and give us the rest from that and in order to have the even elements uh, we have to have this rest uh, equal to zero now we can print out as you can see, we printed uh, all of the even elements from our from our list. We can actually here use much more. As you can see, all of the even elements. Yeah. So this is the basic syntax of the uh, for for loop with the if statements. Okay. Let's clear the output because we don't need that anymore. We may also have like uh, different conditions. It's all about the mathematical operators. So let's say that we want to just print out the numbers uh, which are less than five. We can do this easily with this operator. So number is less than five. We can do it. We can we can actually do uh, different stuff like mixed conditions. Let's let's use the end operator. So let's say that we want to get all of the numbers which are uh, higher than five and less than nine. And we can do that very easily. There's also uh, an OR operator. Again, it's all logic and math maths. So let's say that we have, we want to print out the numbers which are less than two or numbers which are higher than nine. We can also do that easily. Okay, let's have some different example with the list. So let's say that we have our friend and he has like tons of different cars and we have our cars and we would like to check if our friend actually has like if if our friend has all of the cars that we have let's check it out so let's say adam's cars actually i'll copy it because i prepared this little bit list for you so 
So this is Adam's cars. As you can see, he's got tons of different cars. And those are our cars. And we want to see which cars does he have. So in order to do that, we have to iterate through his cars and check if his cars are within our cars. And we can print out. So as you can see, uh, Adam has only Audi and Skoda from our cars. He does not have Bentley, right? We can also nest uh, if statements and do different conditions. What I want to say is elif and else. So let's say that uh, our age is eight. And if your age is less than 10, you uh, print, you, you go free to the cinema. But if our age is less than 12, we can, we have to pay uh, five euros. And all of the older people, they have to pay 10, 10 euros. So as you can see, we can have different conditions, different statements. And why did I show you this? Because I have the homework for you. Uh, this time we'll cover the FISBAS problem. And uh, this problem is very common if all of the interview uh, for your jobs. So the problem is that we want to write a program which will print the numbers and for multiplies for free, we'll we'll, we ha you have to print fizz instead of the number. And for the mul multiplies of five, print bus. And if the number is uh, multiplies both by three and five, you have to print fizz bus. So this is the homework uh, for you this time. And I will cover the solution in the next video. Hey, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe like and click the bell icon so you'll be able to see the notification always when I will release a new video. See you next time!